Good morning and welcome to New Covenant Worship Center. We are so glad that you are back with us today. We invite you in to experience the presence of the Lord. Rejoice with us today. It is a new and blessed year. He is great and greatly to be praised. We will see you after the service. Great is the Lord, my conqueror. He has never failed me yet. Through all my trials, tribulations,
shining might be a little cold but it's still a time to rejoice 
in the house of the Lord this morning. I want to welcome you. You can be seated. I want to talk to you this morning about faith. I know we're going to talk about tithe. It's tithe and offering time. But let's touch the subject of faith this morning. How many of y'all had to have faith this last couple weeks? I need faith every day. Do you need faith every day? Yes. Amen. Let's go to Mark 11, 22. Mark 11, 22 said, So Jesus answered and said unto them, Have faith in God. Have faith in God. Such a small statement, but a powerful thought. Have faith in God. Tithing is an act of faith. Did you know that? Did you know tithing is an act of faith? A faith in a lot of ways. It's just not a faith of, okay, God, if I give, you're going to give back financially. It's a lot of faith in everything. It's faith if I give and, and do God's will, he'll take care of me. If you think about it, the issue is not whether or not to tithe. Tithing is, re is whether it's relevant or not in your life. Do you think tithing is relevant in your life? Do you think it's needful? The real issue is whether you have enough faith to tithe or not. Are you a faithful tither? If you are, then you have the faith to tithe. If not, you need to get the faith to be a regular tither. Tithing, tithing is an act of faith, is a demonstration of your complete dependence on God. Did you know that? When you tithe, you tell God, I am completely dependent upon you and your promises. It is telling God that you can give him the tenth of your income and still be able to live a blessed life. Wow. When you look at your paycheck every week and you look at the bills that come due, do you think you're going to have enough to make it? In today's society, most of us think, God, I can't. I can't give you a tenth of what I make because I can't make it. Because, you know, I've got bills due. My kids need new shoes, new clothes. I've got to buy medicine. God, I've got to have gas in the car. I've got to buy food. I can't tithe. You can't afford not to tithe at this point. Because when you tithe at that point, you've done told God, I have faith that you're going to take care of my every need if I be obedient to your word. 2 Corinthians 5, 7 says we walk by faith and not by sight. When you look at the paycheck and we look at the income and we think, oh my gosh, we're walking by sight. But when you sit down and you think, okay, first thing comes out is my tithe, now you're walking by faith. Here is a truth. Tithing affects every area of your life, not just the money. It affects every area of your life. Because if you don't have faith to give up the mammon to God, you don't have enough faith for anything else in your life. You've got to have that faith because you can't serve God and mammon. So you can't give up a tenth of that mammon. How are you going to serve God in any area of your life? When you think about tithing, you only think about receiving money back. This is not true. Because when you tithe, it tells God you're faithful and you can get healing. You can get strength. You can get peace. The key to tithing is you have to be regular and do it with a joyful heart. You can't just give grudgingly. When you tithe, you've got to do it joyfully. Yes, you may give it because it's a thing to do, but in your heart, you've got to be rejoicing the fact that I can tithe. Because think, God has given you something to tithe. If you don't, got no, you don't have any tithe, then God's not giving you anything. And then you need to ask God, God, I've got to pay my tithe. You've got to send me something in. I don't care if it's a dollar. At least I can give a dime. But I've got to tithe this week, God. Because when you're faithful with it, God will send you something to tithe. In Matthew 16, 24, it says, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. 
can you deny yourself that tenth? Can you deny yourself that tenth? You think, but God, can you deny yourself that tenth? Without saying, but God, you should sit down and think, yes, Jesus, I get to deny this flesh and give you the tenth of what you gave me. Because see, even money is what we think about tithing. But have you ever thought about tithing your time? Denying the flesh and tithing your time? And that is important too. Tithing teaches us to be faithful to God, our provider, no matter what situation we are in. Have you been in situations where you feel like, God, I just can't do it. But you've got to be faithful. You've got to have that faith to believe that no matter the the circumstances, no matter what's going on around you, I don't care that they're laying people off. I don't care that jobs are shutting down. God, I am a faithful tither. I have a tither's right. And that right is I will give. You keep me in a job, I will put you first. That is a tither right. You've got to have that faith that when you tithe, God will take care of you. And if you can give up that tenth, he'll more than give you back 100%. When you become a faithful tither, you have tither right. Because then Jesus becomes your provider. He becomes your protector. When you tithe, it means you can be protected. Then you get to participate with God. Because you then get to get down and worship God with your money. And you get to participate in the things that he does. When you give tithe into your storehouse, when it feeds the hungry, you're participating in God's move. When you're meeting the needs of other people because you've given your tithe to the storehouse, you are participating with God. And then when you tithe, you qualify for every promise that he has given us. Every promise. What's the promise you're standing on today? Are you a faithful tither? If you are, then you need to tell God, God, I'm a faithful tither. I have tither right. I am what I need. I need this promise. I've met the requirements. I am saved. I am doing your will. I am a faithful tither. God, this promise belongs to me. Your word says so. You have to be like the little woman who gave her last mite. Can you imagine being so trustful of God? that you give your last penny in the offering, knowing it's Sunday and payday's not for two more weeks, but you gave your last penny to the house of God. What an act of faith to think, oh my gosh, if I give this to God, he will take care of me. He'll pay my bills this week. Besides, the penny's not going to pay a bill, but look what she got out of it. He took care of her every need. She gave more. She got the attention of God Almighty by giving her last might. When you pay your tithe, you get the attention from the throne of heaven saying, look at my faithful child. He's faithful to him. I'll be more faithful to him. This morning, as you get to use your faith and give your tithe and offering, if you need an envelope, Get with the usher. They'll give you one. But remember, when you pay your tithe, you need to look up at God and say, Look, God, I'm using my faith this morning. I'm using my faith, God. I'm using my faith because I have a need. I have a promise in your word that I need to take care of, God. And here it is. And you that are watching by social media, if you want to donate unto this ministry, you can send your donations to NCWC, P.O. Box 847. Jackson, Ohio, 45640. As we stand this morning, hold your faith in the air this morning. This is one time you get to hold something like faith and show it to God. You may not got paid this week, but you hold your hands up in the air and you tell God, it's not pay week, God, but next week when I get paid, my faith is going right in the offering. And to my storehouse where I get my, my food and my uh, courage and my strength. Is everybody ready this morning? Got your faith? Upon the authority.
God's word. I have given, and it shall be given unto me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, men will give to me. <clears throat> I am a tither. I bring my tithe into your storehouse. Therefore, the enemy is rebuked. The curse is broken. I live under an open heaven. You pour out upon me such a blessing that there's not room enough to receive it. I live in the season of prosperity. We receive jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, sales and commissions, benefits and settlements, estates and inheritance, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, bills paid off, debts canceled, royalties received, my whole family saved and walking with God in perfect health and abundance, walking in divine favor and blessing. I am blessed coming in. I am blessed coming out. All that I do now is first now. In Jesus' name, amen.
wanted to get us out of this place. This is the whole reason he brought this sickness on our land. He wanted us to get out of here. But God is here. His glory fills this place. We cannot be driven from our churches. We cannot be driven from our places of power. God is here. They cannot touch us. The sickness, the disease, the people who wish to take our lands and our power and our freedoms from us, they cannot touch us because we are here in this place. And God is here. He is here with us. Sunday, we will be partaking of the, the table of the Lord, and uh, we will be, Bishop will be coming, and he'll be leading us in that here in just a little bit, but let's, let's uh, go to the Word for a, a, a time this morning. If you have your Bibles, go with me to 2 Chronicles chapter 20, and we'll be beginning at the first verse there. We'll actually uh, be splitting this up into two different uh, sermons uh, to uh, allow for adequate time for the table of the Lord this morning. We'll actually, I'll continue this next Sunday. But we, uh, there's definitely uh, several thoughts I want to get to here. And uh, so, are we? Are we there? I know. I know the team in the back is already with me, but <laughs> they, they probably beat me to it. Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. It happened after this that the people of Moab with the people of Ammon and others with them beside the Ammonites came to battle against Jehoshaphat. Then some came and told Jehoshaphat, saying, A great multitude is coming against you from beyond the sea, from Syria. And they are in Hazazon Tamar, which is in Gedi. And Jehoshaphat feared and set himself to seek the Lord and proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. So Judah gathered together to ask help from the Lord. And from, the cities, from all the cities of Judah, they came to seek the Lord. Then Jehoshaphat stood in the assembly of Judah in Jerusalem, in the house of the Lord before the new court. And said, O Lord God of our fathers, are you not God in heaven? And do you not rule over all the kingdoms of the nations? And in your hand is there not power and might, so that no one is able to withstand you? Are you not our God who drove out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and gave it to the descendants of Abraham 
your friend forever. And they dwell in it and have built you a sanctuary in it for your name, saying, If a disaster comes upon us, sword, judgment, pestilence, or famine, we will, with, we will stand before this temple and in your presence, for your name is in this temple, and cry out to you in our afflictions, and you will hear and save. And now, here are the people of Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whom you would not let Israel invade when they came out of the land of Egypt, but they turned from them and did not destroy them. Here they are, rewarding us by coming to throw us out of your possession, which you have given us to inherit. O oh, our God, will you, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us, nor do we know what to do, but our eyes are upon you. Now all Judah, with their little ones, their wives and their children, stood before the Lord. Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon Jehaziel, the son of Zechariah, the son of Benaiah, the son of Jael, the son of Madaniah, a Levite of the sons of Asaph, in the midst of the assembly. And he said, Listen, all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem, and you, King Jehoshaphat. Thus says the Lord to you, do not be afraid do, nor dismayed because of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours but God's. Tomorrow go down against them. They will surely come up by the ascent of Ziz, and you will find them at the end of the brook before the wilderness of Jeruel. You will need not fight in this battle. Position yourselves. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord who is with you. O Judah and Jerusalem, do not fear or be dismayed. Tomorrow go out against them, for the Lord is with you. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. It's been a couple of weeks, hasn't it? There have been uh, many of us who have been touched by sickness, but God has graced us, and we are here today. We've lost a person, we are standing in our healing, we are in recovery, and God has been good to us. And I I'm not ashamed to say, while I've been locked away in quarantine, I have fallen in love, and I don't mean my wife. She's been there with me, and God has, God has graced us, and it's, it's been a good time together as far as that goes. But I have fallen in love with Jesus Christ all over again. Amen. He has been with me. He has blessed me. And I have learned to stand like Jehoshaphat and say, My, our eyes are on you. I know there are three-plus armies coming for Jerusalem. They're coming for me personally. They're coming for your house. They're coming to kick us out of the land that you have given us. But we're not looking at the armies. We're not looking at their decrees. We're not looking at their reports. God, our eyes are upon you. Many times during the last few weeks, God, I, I, I want a word. I need a word. Give me a word, God. But the, the, the word I sought wasn't there. But what I learned... Get my eyes on Jesus. Get my eyes on Jesus. I don't care what Google says the symptoms are. I don't care what WebMD says could be happening to my body. Get my eyes on Jesus Christ. Yeah. And much like Jehoshaphat, once he declared, God, our eyes are on you and not the situation before us, then the word of the Lord came. Then the promise of God came. And God said, don't worry about it. I have it. You're not going to have to fight. You're not going to have to do a thing. Just position yourself. So God, I'm positioning myself before you. I'm humbling myself before you. God, examine my life in the position I am in. If there be anything that displeases you in my life, if there be anything that displeases you in my home, remove it. But my God, I'm positioning myself for your fight in the battle for me. 
God would tell Moses, God would tell Samuel and Joshua, the different leaders of old, tell the people to sanctify themselves, for tomorrow I'm going to walk among you. Well, we already know the Holy Spirit has told us today, He's walking among us. We're not quite full this morning, but I see two or three. And Jesus Christ told us, wherever two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am. No, no. There I am. When we stand in that place where his name is, the place that he has chosen for his name to be, we stand. Not just us, our wives, our little ones. We stand and we focus on Jesus Christ. Today we get a focus on the communion table. Today we get a focus on the body that was broken, on the blood that was shed. I understand why in one of the Gospels the Lord looked at his disciples and said with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this meal with you. The disciple Jesus loved. With fervent desire. Church, I've missed you all. Don't think I haven't been praying for you. And whether you... Whether you know it or not, your senior pastor brought forth the offertory message today. Here in a little bit, your bishop is going to lead you in communion. We're here together. We are here. We are standing. God, we're positioned before you. Our bodies might be a little tired. May have a sniffle here and there. Coughing it out. But that's okay. For greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Because when my oxygen wanted to leave me, when the breath got to get a little heavy, Deacon Mark, I would sing, it's your breath in my lungs. And I just pour out my, my God, COVID hates that song. My wife, God has graced her patience because I have been a singing man during this time because it's what got me through. She would say, would to God, Isaiah 53, 5 would kick in fast for him. And he quit singing himself through this. But that's okay. Jesus enjoys my joyful noise. But God is good. And we could stand and rehearse God's promises, knowing he is faithful. His word will not return to him void. And Bishop, once I is able to focus my eyes on him, past the problem, past the symptom, past the lies of fear, then his voice come through. His voice come through. I couldn't deny it. Hell surely couldn't deny it. And now we are positioned. As far as I'm concerned, I just saved the U.S. government a lot of money on inoculation. But God is faithful. I, I can't tell you enough. God is faithful. That's why I just want to focus on him. A few weeks ago when Bishop preached, I, I believe the name of the sermon was, um, we, we hoped it was he. No, I'm sorry, it was a week before that when he, when he preached on the, uh, the man with the child with the deaf and dumb spirit. I brought, we come to you. Your disciples tried, but I've come to Jesus. He's who I've sought out. I 
Again, another recent sermon. These, these things are important. It's, the Word of God is life to you. I believe it was a Zoom church when Paul was in the storm. An angel of the Lord stood by me this night. And we have this promise. We're going to lose the boat, but not a soul's going to perish. Point her to the rocks. We're going to run it aground. But God's promise was true. I, I have just immersing myself in the promise of God. Because when you're isolated and alone, promise is all you got. Until you can focus. As, Je as King Jehoshaphat said, O our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power against this great multitude that is coming against us nor do we know what to do. But our eyes are upon you. And then the word of the Lord comes. Listen all of you of Judah and you inhabitants of Jerusalem and you, King Jehoshaphat. He had all the priests, he had all the advisors, he had everyone who who knew this word. But it was Jehoshaphat's prayer that moved God. And God brought the word. Spread the word to all of Judah. All the, the, God didn't leave everyone out, but he drew special attention to the king who said, my eyes are on you. These people's eyes are on you. We stand in your temple with these generations of your we have endeavored to do regular communion with our family during this time and we have stood with our children and they may be our children they may have my last name we may have named them we may have conceived them and birthed them we may be raising them, but they are his inheritance. God, we stand with your inheritance in this place where you have chosen to place your name in this community for this people to gather together in your name. And our eyes are upon you this day. Our hearts are toward, our ears are inclined to your voice this day as we gather the communion table for the body that was broken, for the blood that was shed, that blood, overcoming blood. And we are overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and the word of testimony. This word of testimony that Jehoshaphat rehearsed in the presence of God in his house where he has chosen to call his name. In this house where I get to stand behind his holy desk today, this house that he said, I will bring them from the north and the east and the south and the west to hear the things that God is doing. Not to hear the great sermons I preach. Not to hear the great teaching from our bishop. But to hear the things that God has done. Because I don't know what to do. I just know to turn my eyes on Jesus. I know he is retired from full-time ministry in this capacity, but Brother John Starnes and I have had a lot of church the last few days. Just turn your eyes upon Jesus. I apologize for the tune, but look full in his wonderful face and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory 
and great. Amen? He's a good God. His promises are true, Miss Jess. Elder, his word is true. New Covenant Worship Center, you have a sure word of prophecy. Now let revival come. Let revival come. God, I'm I'm done with I'm done with what we've had. Oh, it's been good. It's I'm I'm ready. I'm ready for the overflow. I'm ready for the goodness that has been promised. Because we have a sure word of prophecy. But position yourselves, New Covenant. As we approach communion, and Bishop gets ready to come here in just a few minutes, position yourself before the Lord. Examine yourself. Sanctify yourselves, New Covenant, for the Lord walks among you today. If you have aught in your heart, get it out. Unforgiveness, get it out. If you have sin in your life, get it out. If you have things that are afflicting you, take your healing at God's table. Take your deliverance at God's table. Oh, God God has healed me. God has favored me. But there are things I'm taking today. And the the good thing about the the communion table, it, it, it gets down deep in you. It goes to every part of you. God, anything disorderly in me, anything out of line, Correct it today from the top of my head to the soles of my feet. Soul, body, and spirit, bring me in line. Position me, God. Amen? Bishop, if, if, you, are, if you are ready uh, for the communion table, I, I will... I will give you the platform. Matthew 26, 26 through 30. Let's take communion together. I believe you are prepared. If you have said under the word that has been spoken here this morning and the praise of the worship from beginning to end and you're not ready, I don't think five more minutes of pretense will help you. Lord, we're ready. Humbly. Graciously. We come upon the table of the Lord. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he blessed it as we do right now. And he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Move in the table of the Lord and receive the body of Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Then he took the cup, as we do right now. Gave thanks. There's nothing but the blood of Jesus. We recognize and we discern the body of Christ, the body of Jesus. We take it fully, his body that was broken for us. But oh, the blood, the blood that saved us, that forgave us, that redeemed us, that cleansed us. He took the cup and he gave thanks. My God, I give you thanks, Lord. And he gave it to them 
saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say to you, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Would you receive the blood, the saving blood, the healing blood, the delivering blood of the Lord Jesus? Drink all of it. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise today for your body and your blood to receive our healing, our deliverance, our anointing, your anointing. We give you praise for everything. We give you praise and we worship you, Lord, in Jesus' name. What an awesome move of God. It doesn't matter how we get to gather in his name as long as we are there. He is with us. Service was mighty today. There are mighty things happening in this world, in this nation, in your lives. We certainly hope that you were touched today. Please go ahead and reach out to us if you have a testimony or a prayer request or just need something. Reach out to us. That information is on the screen. Be sure to follow us on our social media pages and we will see you next week.